Well, um, Ian, first of all, after the euphoria of last week, um, how easy or otherwise has it been to sort of get the focus straight back onto the next job in hand this week? Quite easy, really. Um, I think we all know the, the game and the importance on getting something out of the game so we can be back here again. So I think we players have been really focused. We, we had Sunday, Monday off just because we wanted to give them a little bit of downtime and, and the rest. They've, they've done fantastically well over the recent weeks. And just to uh, and then we've had some really good trainings the rest of the week. So I think the, the players are extremely focused and in good spirits and, and, and ready to go again. I guess having had a taste of a, of a home game again with fans in, which is the first time in a long time they've had it, they must be desperate for it again. Yeah, of course. You know, it was a, it was a great day and the fans were magnificent. So we, we'd really love to, to get that opportunity again. Um, but it's on us, you know, we've got to, to deliver a result against Bromley. And, uh, and if we can do that, then hopefully we'll be, we'll be here again. It's interesting when you, you know that a draw will be enough. Do you have to sort of block that out and sort of think of it more as go for the win and not concentrate on that single point that you actually need? Yeah, we don't play for draws. Um, we only play for wins, so we, we go to try and win the game. Uh, that's normal. We, we just want to, to play our best game and try and win it. And if a draw is the outcome at the end, then OK, um, that, that, that will see us at home. It's not what we, we're going for. You know, We go there to, to try and put a game plan together to win the match. So um, I think it's always best to, to do that. So we go for that. Do you feel like there is a little bit of less pressure on you, though, because you have a, at the very least secured a playoff place anyway? Probably, yeah. I mean, if we'd not, say we'd not won one of the previous two and it was all on this last game, of course, there's more pressure on it. But, um, but you know, we still put pressure on ourselves to perform and, and put pressure on ourselves to, to maintain momentum going into the playoffs and, and to try to get a home game. So there's still an element of pressure for us, but obviously there's, there's more on Bromley um, because if they don't win the game, they don't be in the, the playoffs. So they have to um come out and they know the consequence of not so um, you know there's probably more pressure on them but at the same time we want to try and put the pressure on ourselves to to play well yeah I mean it, it is a, a fascinating setup isn't it where the, mm. the home team needs to win but you also need something out of it what, what do you think that will do for for the game what, what kind of match will that sort of turn it into do you think I mean I, I would imagine the game starts with a lot of energy you know because it'll be their first game with their fans as well and they'll have that same bounce that we had when when we saw our fans so They'll, they'll get some energy off of them and they'll probably come out fast. But at the same time, I think that they, they know at some point they've got to open the game up and, and come and try and win it, uh, whether they do that right from minute one or, or whether they are quite disciplined and, and try and throw everything in at us in the last 20 minutes. We will expect them to to be attack-minded and, and try and come and win the game. So we've got to be uh, prepared for that. Having had the fans in front of you and that being an advantage for you, how do you ensure that playing against a team who've got their own fans in isn't a, a disadvantage for you, if you see what I mean? I think we have to play our game. I think we have to try to play like the way that we have been, which is quite quite offensive and, and um, attacking and we've been on the ball a lot. And I think that obviously probably unnerves the away fans more than um, helps them. So, you know, we... In a strange way, you want to try and and uh, quieten the crowd and turn them against, and and that way it's a positive for you. So, but we can only do that by playing in a similar way to the the way that we have. So that's got to be the target for us. Midweeks are done now. You've had enough of them over mm. over the last couple of months or so. Um, how much of a help is that for you though, that this week you've actually been able to plan a week ahead of a game and will continue to do so in the coming weeks? Yeah, I mean, I, I love to be on the training pitch as well. I love the games because that's where you kind of get all your reference points and that's the competition and that's what you're here for. Um, but at the same time, it's nice to have a break from that and, and be on the training pitch and really work with the team. And um, So, yeah, it's nice to get that time and we can recover the players correctly and make sure everybody's 100% when we prepare for the next match. So I think it's great you know, to have Saturday, Saturday now for a, for a few weeks, hopefully. Yeah, well, I was going to ask you about recovery because it is the end of a long season and with kind of one eye on, on next, there's very little time for rest and recuperation before you, you'll be wanting a pre-season to start for next season. So are you, are you trying to sort of manage the players' fitness at, at the end of this long season? Yeah, I mean, the players don't get fitter now. Uh, that's It's about them being fresh and them feeling mentally fresh as well. So, But we, we can't, that doesn't mean that we drop off the kind of intensity and purpose in the training sessions because 
you know, we want to maintain that and, and have that go into the game. So I think for us, it's just about maybe shorter, more intense sessions and then enough recovery so the players are fresh. How much will you be paying attention to any results elsewhere as to um, who you might then end up playing in the playoffs? I probably just look at that after. We'll have one eye on um, perhaps, you know, around Wrexham's result because I think Wrexham's the, the only team there that, that can go ahead of us in uh, in our position. So then we've got to be mindful of that and obviously maybe that formulates some decisions towards the end of the game. So I'll, I'll be conscious of their result, but, but other than that, no, not really. Maybe Hartley pulls as well because that might affect us, um, you know, if they're behind. So that might affect some decisions. So we'll keep one eye on it, but in general, we'll focus on our game and then look at the league after. Yeah, I mean, you're the ones to beat at the moment. You're the informed team. Does it does it matter to you who who you play really in the playoffs from your perspective? Not really. I think if you're going to get promoted, you've got to beat good teams and you've got to come up against you know well organised, good coaches. And and I think if we're gonna if we're gonna go up, then it doesn't really matter anybody that ends up in that. Uh, top part of the table is is obviously had a decent season, so we're going to play teams that have got a lot of competencies. So it doesn't matter to me really. Each team poses a slightly different threat, so we've just got to prepare for for each one accordingly. Great stuff. Best of luck. Brilliant. Thanks Thank you. you, Lee. Oh, just one from Alan, mate. You okay? Yeah, brilliant. Thanks. Um, <clears throat> just uh, a couple from me. Um, just on injuries, have you uh, are you are you all clear for for the weekend? Yeah, we're all clear. Everybody came through the last game and I think like with the week being able to freshen everybody up, everybody's uh, fit and ready to go. So nice position to be in again where, you know, we're not struggling with anybody or any doubt. So that's uh, that's a good positive. And in terms of <clears throat> all the pressure being on Bromley to get a result, does that play into your hands somewhat in terms of the way you like to play? Because you're very good on the counter-attack, aren't you? So... Yeah, I think we've we've had a, a big variety of attacks. I think some of the attacks and the goals that we've scored have started with Sam Slocum and built through the pitch and sometimes we win the ball back and attack really quick. So I think we've had some variation. But yeah, I mean, certainly the more space that gets opened up for us is it's a massive bonus, you know. Teams that sit low and frustrate us for long periods, of course, that's a, I think that, that can be tough sometimes. So yeah, Bromley have to come out. They have to score a goal, um, which means they've got to commit at some point. So yeah, it should open and we should be um, positive to take use the space and, and take the attacks when we get them. Because I remember you saying after the game here in the 2-2 in the draw, I remember you saying how well organised they were. Mm. Um, but I, I, I suggest that they, they can't sit back, can't afford to sit back in this game because like you say, they need to get a result. Yeah, not for, not for the whole game, but you know, again, football strange, you know, crazy thing can happen in the first five minutes and, and they might then park the bus or... Any, anything can happen, so we have to be prepared for a, a variety of situations. I think we've worked well now playing against like low blocks and teams that have pressed us. So we've played at different systems now, and we're slowly getting there with how we want to play. Um, so yeah, I mean, like you say, they were really well organised here. I have to say, they sat and they were extremely well disciplined. They defended the box well when they needed to. Um, so I, I imagine that they're not going to change that. That's brought them success across the season. Um, but they will, of course, have to have something extra going forward in, in this game, I think. Uh, and just finally, a long trip down to Bromley, stay over in a hotel. What um, what have you got planned for the players tonight or on the way down? Will you be what, taking in some films? or? Yeah, maybe. I'm going to drive and uh, drive a little bit and leave my car, so it's not too far from, from my home, so I'll go back. It's my daughter's birthday, so then I can go and see her uh, tomorrow, so I'm missing that today. But, um, but How old is she? She'll be seven. Well, she's seven today. And then for me, yeah, maybe a bit of Netflix. I guess the lads are on Netflix. and, um, But, yeah, I don't know. And then we'll, we, this this evening we'll have a dinner together. Um, we'll have a couple of meetings, go through the clips. We don't have so much time in the morning because it's a 12.30 mm -hmm. kick-off. So we'll get as much done as we can tonight, let the players rest, and then go all in tomorrow at 12.30. Lovely stuff. All right, well, I wish you all the very best and a safe journey down. Brilliant. Thanks, Lee. Cheers. Cheers. Jake. Great stuff. Hi, Ian. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good yourself. Yeah, good, thank you, pal. Good, thank you. Good. Um, I just want to quickly pick up on something um, you mentioned with uh, you mentioned with David, of course, that you go into every game looking for the win. You're not playing for the draw. But does that 
change depending on circumstances or how games go. Say if you're one all or something with 10 minutes left to go, do you then kind of think, right, we, we shut up shot or do you still go for it regardless? Yeah. Honestly, normally I just go for it regardless. And I, I know that's like... Because I think the minute that you accept something and you sit back, like if you're 1-0 up and you know you've got five minutes and they're, they're playing high risk, you have to defend the box and that's normal. Um, but if you go, right, it's 1-1, we'll accept this now and we'll sit back early and we won't risk anything now. I think you can bring pressure on yourself. So I think we keep the mindset that we, we try and win the game. If we're ahead, then we try and protect that lead in our way. Um, but yeah. We, we manage the game as it comes, you know. I, th I think sometimes you just got to read the context of the game and then manage it uh, accordingly. Definitely. Can, can, and can that be sometimes um, difficult to kind of like drill down into players? Of course, I guess that comes with more time with them. But is, have, you, have you experienced it where players, you know, even though you want to carry on and go for the wing, the players do get a little bit nervy and, and do have one eye on that uh, on the scoreline at the time? Yeah, I think you just got to try and keep the players calm and focused on, on the situations that are occurring in the game. So... I think they know if we if we're one nil up and there's five minutes to go and they're bombarding long balls. Of course, we're gonna um, we we have to be able to defend that. And they know, you know, if we one minute to go, that keep the ball and don't give it back, don't have transition. So, but a, a lot of that comes with experience, and we've got good experience in the team as well. So I trust them that they manage the situations well. And, and speaking of the uh, the clash tomorrow, just how important is um, keeping up that momentum? Of course, as we, as we said, I think it's five wins past seven, unbeaten in seven. How important is it to you know not lose tomorrow? Shall we say? Yeah, I think the the most important thing is that it's important to put a, a really good performance in, like we we have been doing. I think the performances have helped give us the the points, and I think the the mindset and the way the players have uh, approached every game has been strong. So you know, as long as we do that, I think we put ourselves in a good position. And then you know we go from there. So I think it's more about focusing on all the things that we've been doing that have helped us in this run. We just keep doing them um, and focus on that really. And, and then the, the outcome should take care of itself. Sure. And I think this was um, announced a couple of weeks ago. So do forgive me if you've already uh, been asked this, but uh, of course the the National League final this season won't be at Wembley. It'll be at um, it'll be at Bristol City's Ashton Gate. I just wanted to get your thoughts on that. And and, and does it take away from the occasion a little bit, or doesn't it matter if you go up? doesn't matter I don't care you could play it on a park down the road if we went up <laughs> it doesn't matter to me you know I want a, of course a day out at Wembley would be lovely but the, the biggest thing for us is that we're there um, and we, we you know now we're in the playoffs we give ourselves a chance but we're not there yet we, we got, we'll have very difficult games if we're going to achieve it um, we have to work extremely hard and if we're there then brilliant I you know I, I want to be there um, and doesn't matter to me then where it is I really don't care um if the pitch is good, that's the only thing. Nice pitch, um, get the fans in, and that's the most important thing. Um, but the the most important thing now is Bromley, and then the two games after are going to determine whether we're there or not anyway, and it's it's up to us, so we have to focus on that. For sure, great answer. And, um, and just a little bit of cl uh, club news that came out this week, of course, uh, Chief Executive Jason Turner gave us back into the academy regardless of mm. if promotion is achieved this season or not. Just wanted to get your thoughts on that and how crucial that can be for the club going forward. Yeah, I think I said uh, in an interview the other day that you know, I came, as a coach myself, I came through academy. You know, I was a product of an academy as a coach, and I think it's really important to to have, you know, good young coaches and and uh, young players in our own system that we're developing. And I think it's really important. We want to try to develop a bit of an an identity about who we are and and have that filtering down and you know, have a buy-in and develop our kind of players. So it takes time, uh, but I think it's important as a part of the club that we have that connection between young players in the area and give them a chance of maybe being footballers in the future. And, and how much of a close eye do you keep on their progress? Yeah, I mean, obviously it's been pretty busy since I've been here. Um, I've had some good meetings and, I, you know, um, we've, we've, I've spent some time with the coaches down there. Um, but of course from next season I'd like to see a lot more of the, the games and the young players coming through and and uh, give some thoughts and ideas towards that um, they haven't had so many games since I've been here because of the restrictions um, but certainly going forward it's something that I'll, I'm, I'm always interested in Cool, great stuff. that's all for me thank you for your time as always and uh, best look for Brian no thanks thanks Jack thanks, Ian. anything for you Pete? yeah just uh, quickly Ian 
Um, top of the form table for the last five, two clean sheets as well. Sister Richard Brindley as well. Are you the team that wants to face in the playoffs? Uh, one more time, I ju- it just cut out a little bit. Sorry. Um, so you're top of the form. In the last two games, are you the team no one wants to face in this playoffs? I did. I, I, I got all that question. Then I was going to make you ask it again, just so you could say top of the form table again. Um, but uh, no, it was no. I don't think people really want to face us. <laughs> I don't think people really want to face us. Um, we're playing well. We're scoring goals. But you know, I, I got a lot of respect for the other teams that are up there. You know, Hartlepool have had a very good season. Um, good coaches there and they were a really difficult team when we played against them you know Wrexham are a strong team I know we've beat them twice but they've got good players and so I think there's a lot of good teams in there I'm sure people don't want to face us at the moment because we're in good form um, but at the same time you know we have to have a lot of respect for the people that we're playing against and, and there's some quality up there so we've got to not take anything for granted and and uh, work extremely hard if we whoever we face do you think it's well timed this uh, run of form? Obviously, you the start and you've just sort of hit the ground quite nicely now. Yeah, I mean, it's never a bad time to 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 win matches, but it's it's even better when we're close to the end of the season and and in the playoffs. So you're right; it's um, it's it's nice to kind of be on a, a upward trajectory as we go into the the playoff spots. So um, yeah, that's good. Uh, but like I say, you know, tomorrow is. Tomorrow is also part of maintaining that trajectory. And lastly, have you spoken to any of the players that were part of last season's squad about you know coming into the run-in and the playoffs and how they dealt with it? Anything to learn? Anything to um, work on in that aspect? Yeah, a little bit. You know, me obviously me and Doyle have spent plenty of time now together talking about how things were and, and got little bits of feedback. But you know, I think after we've got this game out of the way and we look at who we're playing. You know, we'll look a little bit deeper into how we want to prepare, but I certainly want to prepare in my way. And and um, but you know, the, the experiences from last year can only can only help us really and help the players that were involved. Perfect. Thanks very much, Ian. Thanks, Great. Pete. Best of luck for tomorrow. Thank you. Anything, Alex? Yeah, just a comment from me, mate. Um, is the obviously you only played Bromley just I think it's twenty days ago. Is that short turnaround beneficial? Um, I, th- I think it's the same for both teams, so I think it's it's doesn't really matter t- to me. Um, we played them. I think we found out some things about them, um, but I guess they found out some things about us. So, you know, it's the the same for both. I, I don't think it's a, certainly don't think it's a negative, um, but you know. I, I think the, 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 the good thing is is that, that that game is fresh in our minds so we can kind of refer back to it when we're preparing now. And um, how important is it for you guys, uh, the team as well as, you know, I'm sure the fans really want another home tie. How much do you really want to push for that? Yeah, of course. You know, the, 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 it was a fantastic day last week at Meadow Lane and, and we really want to, to be here again to see the fans and, and to perform in front of them again. So... It's really important for us, so we, we we're very focused on on that as an objective right now, and um, you know we keep that at the forefront of our minds. Um, the fact that we get to play in front of our own fans again, which should be a, a big motivator really for this match. And um, as we've talked about, Bromley are fighting for their playoff spot themselves. Do you think it could be hard to match their intensity, especially with their fans back? No, I no. don't think so. Um, I think we we have real purpose with the way that we've been playing. I'm sure that they come out with a lot of intensity, and they've had a really good season, um, and they've certainly been on a an upward lift lately. So you know, it's uh, not an easy game at all down there. But you know, one of the strengths that we've had in in previous weeks is the kind of tempo and intensity we've played with. So you know, we whatever they bring, you know, we we intend to match it. And all the teams, so from Bromley up to um, um, Wrexham, Wrexham are seventh, aren't they? Yeah, um, Sixth, yeah. they they're all so tight. Is, does it really matter so much to you about finishing fourth? As long as you get that home tie, do you really mind who you sort of face in the next round, or are you not that bothered? Uh, not that I'm not bothered. I mean, it, you know, but I don't really think too much about it, you know, because there's no point in kind of. Ho- hoping or thinking about who it might or might not be. 
when uh, at the end of 90 minutes tomorrow we'll know who we face and then we have to prepare for that so each team poses a different threat and like i said before if we're going to if we're going to make it to the final and then and and hopefully make it make it up we're going to have to play good teams in difficult games um and and beat them so you know it doesn't doesn't really matter we we it's going to be the same for me